hello quilty friends and I'm so happy that you're here. Welcome to my sewing room and today we are going to sew another hometown block and we are on block number 12. So I have all of these blocks laid out here that are, I have 16 each of these blocks uh, that we need. There's going to be 14 total and so I've done 11 tutorials so far. This is block number 12. I'm doing them in 5 inch size and 10 inch size. I'm only doing one 10 inch size. Okay. And then I'm doing 16 of each of the other sizes for the king size quilt for my bed. So this is what this block looks like. Okay. So when I'm designing these blocks, let me pull this in. When I'm adding to these blocks each week. Remember, here's my little basket that I have of, of my hometown fabric that I cut up into two and a half squares, two inch squares, one and a half inch squares, and then I've got some three and a half inch strips and some two and a half inch strips. And then, so what I've been designing these blocks, I've been thinking, okay, I need to use, you know, different sizes, not all the same sizes in each block. So this block, I thought I would use the two and a half inch right here, the two and a half inch and the one and a half inch that match it. Okay, and I really liked this block too because of the space that there is around the outside because I like that on some of the blocks and some of the other blocks, you know, don't have like easy corner triangles. See what I'm saying with that one? Like, here, let me pull this in. I forgot that I laid these out on the board just to tell you about this. So here's just a few, one or two of some of the same, you know, the previous 11 blocks. So see how some of them have borders around them. Some of them have easy corner triangles in the corner. Some of them have more space around them like this, like the churn dash. Some of them look more like a star. Some of them have checkerboard. You know, I just want a variety of different blocks so that they look nice in the quilt and complement each other. And I really like how, like I said, this there's more background showing in this one and there's more space. And so that's going to break it up and give a little bit of a place for your eyes to rest. And so um, I had someone ask me, you know, what my process was is how do I know which, which kind of a block that I want to go in here? Well, of course, I have to do one that works in a five inch. Every quilt block doesn't go in a five inch. So, you know, you just have to narrow it down to what you think is best. And um, so I'm happy to be doing this block. Let's just leave this one right here as a sample. And then I'll hurry and just go through these right here and show you each one that I have done. I have a lot of you reaching out to me saying that you enjoy seeing each block that I have done. So um, you can see the color combinations and get different ideas because you have a hard time putting colors together. And so here's my 15 of these block 12 that I have finished. And then we'll be sewing block 16 today. And so when I'm sewing these blocks, like if, for instance, if I have another pink one with the tulip points, with I call the tulip points, um, and then I have a green center. Then if I do another pink one, I try to not do one with a pink center. Or say I have this one with green in it. So I try to have blue and green together instead of, you know, I try to not have the same color combination together a lot. Um, and that is really conducive to scrappy sewing and why it's fun to sew scrappy because, you know, you're allowed to do that. Like these points are sort of the same colors but the centers, one's red and one's pink. So they're kind of similar, but different enough. And then there's my last one there. And so that's what we'll be sewing today. And we'll be using the two and a half inch trim it ruler and the five and a half inch, of course, because that's what our block is going to, you know, square up to right there. And so for our pieces that we need for the prints, we need four of the one and a half by two and a half rectangles and then another matching four of one and a half inch squares. Okay, for those are for the little tulip points. And then we just need a one and a half inch square for the center. 
and then to go with, here, let me set that up there, to go with, um, for our backgrounds, we need to grab 12. I'm just going to grab a stack because, you know, that's got to be 12. And then we need four of the one and a half by two and a half, so the same size there, four. And, you know, I've got my little stack right here, so if I need to grab more one and a half inch squares, I can. And this is a fun, easy block to construct. As per usual, I'll be pressing the seams open. Let's set that there. And so the first thing that we're going to do is, again, as per usual, we're going to add these easy corner triangles after. And so basically, we're just going to be constructing these sections first. So what we're going to do is take the four one and a half inch squares. I'm like, this feels like more. Yeah, there's five. Put that back in the basket. Okay. And then we're going to match them up with the background and use the quarter inch seam allowance right here. I'm going to grab my glasses so I can see a little bit better. And I'm just using this line on my Seam So Easy guide as my quarter inch. to go in between. I also wanted to answer another question. Someone asked me how, um, why I use a scrap piece of fabric when I'm not doing my bonus. Well, it's to save thread. And it's also for, um, I just got in the habit of sometimes when you feed your blocks under here, it'll, um, certain machines, I don't have problems with that with the featherweight. And that's one of the reasons I love featherweights. But some machines will gum up when you're trying to, like the threads will build up and um, create knots or whatever you want to say when you're trying to feed pieces under. Well, if you use a piece of scrap fabric before and after, that really helps so that you're just seamlessly, you know, going in between. And so you might want to try that. Okay, so now we're going to go over here. And I'm going to set the seams. So they're nice and flat and that bobbin and top thread is squished together and then I'm just going to open these and these are small enough pieces that I think I can only you know use one clapper for all of these right here so I open those up I get my roller and I just roll so that's completely open and there's no pleats in there and also I like to know that it's completely open so that I can just set my iron on top and not iron I can actually just press and get that nice and warm and set a clapper there and I'm going to come over here and see if there's something else I can do on the block while I'm waiting for those to cool down and I can I can take this center square and I can sew a rectangle to each side so this is what I mean when, you know, feeding a piece of fabric in between each one so that you don't have any of that happening. Um, I have a few machines that I use. I mostly, primarily, 99% of the time use my featherweights. But, you know, I have other machines and different machines just act differently when they're pulling your fabric in and I've never had that problem with the featherweight but I have had that problem with other machines and so that's why I just got used to using a scrap piece of fabric and I've done that for I don't even know years and years okay so then I come back over here I'm going to set both sides of those seam do the same thing open it up I love to press my seams open especially with smaller blocks because um, it helps them to lie nice and flat, therefore keeping them accurate. Okay, so I'm going to 
to bring these over here. And I usually like to have them face all the same way. And then I'm going to take this color right here and add a rectangle to the side. So I hope you all are getting a chance to sew and I hope that you enjoy sewing with me in my sewing room because I sure enjoy having you here with me. It keeps me motivated um, making this quilt and having so much fun and knowing that, you know, I'm designing a block and I'm going to show it to you how I'm sewing it and um, it's just fun for me. I've always loved sewing with friends and uh, I hope you feel the same way. Okay, so now I'm going to come over here. Squish my seams. I'm going to set that aside there for a minute. And do two at a time to go under one clapper. I'm going to roll, especially when there's little seams that meet up there. And then I'm going to press down making sure this is open and I'm going to use another clapper that's not still warm. I'm going to grab one that's cool, put that on top. Now I'll set that one aside and not use that yet. I'll just pull another one in. And when opening these I really just do use my my finger or my fingernail I mean, you don't have to have a long fingernail to do that. You just have to have something that will open up. And I've just gotten so used to doing this by pressing my seams open. It just, you know, is second nature to me. And it's just not a bother to me with that uh, time taken to do it. Okay, so I'm going to let that cool for just a minute. And these are the pieces that I'm setting aside to make sure that I'm going on the corners here and that's going correct and I'm just going to go ahead and lay this out. I've got a little wrinkle in this. I'm going to press this real quick. It got wrinkled sitting there. Okay so I'm going to lay those out on this little design board so that I know where that's going to where these things are going to go so I don't put things in the wrong direction. Okay but I'm going to grab this and um, now's the time I'm going to grab these and I think these are cool enough that I want to make sure that these measure two and a half. And if they don't, then I can trim them off because before I add those easy corner triangles, I want to make sure this lines up. So. Here we go right here and I can see these lines line up this way. It looks like I've got just a little teeny bit right here that I can trim off of that one. So that one's good to go. And I'm just starting from the center and lining these up and making sure that everything looks good and before I trim off this area I'm going to make sure that this goes all the way to the edge of that ruler and it does because I don't want to trim it too short I have to look at the whole entire piece okay that's all I need for that one and so if this is a little bit larger you know usually um, it's because I'm maybe not using quite a quarter inch seam allowance, but that's okay. I'd rather have them be a little bit too, too large and just trim off a smidgen. And, and uh, it just really helps to keep me accurate. And that's just that much. Now, I have shown you in my last video 
I believe it was, what to do. Was it the last one? or the, Yeah, I believe it was the last video that I showed you what to do when your pieces are too small and how that's also a fix and how I do that. So I'm just going to leave that sitting there. I'm going to bring these pieces over here. And they all look like a little heart to me now, okay? And then I like to put them all the same direction because it just helps me from making mistakes. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add an easy corner triangle on each side with the background. And so how I do that is I'm going to just line up those edges. I'm going to use this center line right here that's lined up with this needle. And I'm going to start sewing right in the corner and then I'm going to follow this line right here on the corner. And that just stops me from having to mark my fabric. If you um, like to mark your fabric, that's great. That's not a problem. You can just grab a ruler. See, I've got these long rulers here. Let me move this over. These are just new. There's the short one. And they're a half inch wide. And they've got this little non-slip here on the bottom. And so you could use those to mark. And I just use a mechanical pencil. And so that's easy enough to do as well. But it also takes time. And uh, on these small pieces, because this bed is this deep, I just don't tend to mark those pieces because I have plenty of room to use this center line. When I have larger, you know, squares that I need to... Um, so that go past this, then of course I'll just mark it with a pencil and a ruler. And so I'm just making sure that these are all point up and so that I'm sewing this going the right direction so that I have that little tulip shape. And I'll just leave that one in. Cut these apart and do the other side because I can do that. I don't have to trim and press one side. I can go ahead and do the opposite side and do the pressing all at once. side on. I've got a few leftover squares so I can just put those back. This, this is what's fun about sewing from your stash or sewing from you know basically your own homemade pre-cuts is they're already cut you can just grab them and the sewing you don't have to cut and then sew cut and then sew. I like to do my cutting a lot of my cutting beforehand so that I have cutting days and I can just enjoy that time that I'm cutting and uh, then I can sew on sew days too. So I use my design boards in cutting blocks and then I just stack them by my machine and then I just know what I need to sew next. And I really, have, that's how I've sewn for years and years and, and uh, I really love that. It's relaxing to me knowing when I have a sewing day and a cutting day and I like to just have things stacked up and cut and ready to sew when I'm in the mood to sew. And I know I can just grab something and start sewing. And I feel like I get a lot more accomplished that way too. And just instead of, I don't know why, but when I cut a block and then sew it, for some reason it feels like it's taking me twice as long that it normally would. And uh, it might not be, but it just maybe feels like it to me. So, but we all have our own you know, things that we like to do in our sewing room, our own systems. But that's mine, and it's worked for me for a long time, and maybe it would work for you too. Okay, so I'm just opening that up. I'm going to give that one more quick press when I add this one to go underneath the clapper. I forgot to roll that one, so I'm going to roll that. I especially... Don't want to forget to roll these with these seams 
going across, it really helps to get those flat. Okay, so now I'll press. This one should be cooled down. It is. It's surprising how um, much heat these little clappers will hold, which is the point. That's what they do is they're pulling the heat out of your blocks and so that it will dry nice and flat. But um, I've just learned over time that it's important to not keep putting a warm clapper on top of a warm block that you already want to pull that. You know, you want to pull the heat out and so you don't want to use one that's already warm. You want to start with a cool one if you possibly can. So, you know, you don't need to be using as many clappers as I have if you don't want to, but I would definitely recommend using, having at least two, you know, maybe a third that you can switch off. And that's helped me. I've even showed you how I've used a clapper sandwich sometimes and <laughs> put my blocks in between if I need to. So I've just gotten the habit of filling my clappers before I put them on there. <coughs> All right, let's, let's look at this for just a minute while we're letting those cool. And I just, I always like to show you the back. And this is sewn the exact same way. We're going to, you know, we've pressed all of the seams open. And of course I give you the cutting for this within um, the description of this video. But the cutting is just twice as big. You know, this is a 10 and a half inch unfinished. It will finish at 10 inches. And so instead of working with one and a half inch uh, size increments, we're doing two. So these would be two and a half inch squares that you start out with. These would be two and a half by four and a half. And this would be a two and a half, and this would be two and a half by four and a half right here. Those background pieces. And um, I love this block. That looks kind of Christmassy to me because it's red and green. Because Christmas is, you know, it's, it's almost getting here, so... My favorite holiday, I love Christmas, but my favorite holiday is Thanksgiving. So I always try to um, not fully put up Christmas until Thanksgiving is over so that I can enjoy that. Okay, so now we've got these little tulip shapes, but I want to check those out and see if I, you know, did anything crazy or, you know, went over a little bit too far. And, you know, these are handmade blocks. It's so very easy to do. There's no such thing as perfection. What we do is we just try to do the best that we can um, with what we have. And I can see that was over just a little bit. And then see see how you can see this right here before I trim that off. I just, I don't wanna just assume. I just wanna make sure that that is what I need to trim off. So that looks good. Lining it up in the center. And usually when I'm, you know, this is one block, so this only takes a second to trim these off, but usually I'm doing several blocks at a time. And then I'll just take a break and go over and and uh, have my stack, take a break from my machine, go over to my work table, is what I was trying to say, and then have a stack and then just trim them all at once. And, you know, usually takes 10 minutes or something like that. And to me, it's very worth it to take that extra time just to, I don't know if I really needed to trim that side, but I got a, th a few threads off anyway. It's worth it to me just to um, have them straight, you know, straightened up, squared up, and ready to go. And uh, each block... You know, if you have it, know that I have a problem with a section, if I have a problem with a section, so that I know how to go forward with that. Okay, so these, see how they're kind of sticking up off the design board? It's just because I didn't leave the clappers on long enough because I'm filming, but I will be pressing these again, you know, so I will get them flatter in that process. And so all I'm doing now is sewing three. Uh, two rows, the top and the bottom row together now. I like them laid out on my design board so that I know that I've got everything going the correct direction that I need to. And you can, 
you can pin if you if you want to. I'm usually not a pinner for small pieces, especially when I get into the larger pieces. Yes, I pin, but I just start at the beginning and then kind of see how I pulled that out and made sure those were even. And then I just hold it with my fingers and make sure that I'm, you know, that it's going, that it's going to start and end where it needs to. And I know because I cut this two and a half inches and I know that I squared this up two and a half inches that they'll fit and I can make them fit. I love that cotton has a little bit of give to it and so that you can kind of pull and do what you need to do to, to make it fit. And I know I've said this several times before too, but I really do like to use a foot on my machine that has an open area or an open toad so that I can see exactly every time where my where my needle is going into my fabric instead of just feeding it under and then hoping it all was supposed to, you know, work out and come out at the end. <laughs> I guess that's the control a control person, you know, the control freak in me. I don't know. I just want to know what I'm doing at each step of the way so that I know if there's a problem, I can address that and adjust it if necessary. Okay, so now I'm just going to set these seams and I simply just fold both ways so that it can be set. Open up. And I usually like to put a little heat on that one side before I before I roll it just to um, help to keep that open. And I do use the tips and sides of my iron with the heat there just to kind of open that up. And then I really like to push down and roll right there at those intersections where those meet up. Okay. And then I can go ahead and press that whole thing. That's cool. And I want to get this nice and hot. And so it just, this pressing, the steps to pressing are very important in quilting. It's like your cutting's very important, cutting accurately, and sewing, of course, with your quarter inch seam allowance is very important. But pressing is just as important. You can you can do the best that you can in the in the cutting and the sewing, but if you kind of ignore the pressing and just kind of let it roll under the iron how it goes, it uh, can easily distort your blocks. And so I like to pay attention to my pressing just as much as my cutting and my actual sewing. Okay, I've got that nice and hot. And I think I'm going to put two clappers there. And while I'm letting that cool, I'm going to bring this basket in and talk about this for a second again. So because of this block, remember I told you that we used the two and a half. The next block I have drawn up, I'm going to be using the three and a half just so that I'm getting into this pile. You know, I'm building it down. I am making, you know, 16 blocks of each one. And so um, it does use quite you know, it starts to get it down. And um, these two and a half inch squares I have, they're often used in the 10 inch size too. And so they go down. And, but when obviously I've only got, um, you know, we're on number 12, so I only have two more blocks to do. So this is not going to be depleted, which I love because then I will just separate them and put them into my um, two and a half inch squares bin my two inch squares bin and I have a, I do have one bin that just has a bunch of leftover strips and with that I like to do scrappy log cabins or um, courthouse steps and so I've got one that I'm working on right now and as a, as a bonus quilt too and so at one point I'll show you about those but I save my strips kind of all together too or I could just put them because they're all one and a half inch wide I could put them in my basket with my one and a half inch strips but because these are already cut into certain size increments that would work in a log cabin and courthouse steps, then I just keep those kind of separate in another little bin. And then they are going to be used for another project and mixed in with all of my other leftover squares. And I love that. I love sewing scrappy and it's really 
you know, I really enjoy um, filming Sew Your Stash series so that, um, you know, we, we can all have fun sewing with our scraps. Okay, so now all I have to do is add that into the middle. And what I'm going to do is start off here at the ends. Oh, because look, okay, so let me hold this up and let me show you. See how this is just a little bit longer on this end? So what I'm going to do before I sew that together is I'm going to bring this over. I'm going to grab my five and a half inch ruler because this is how long it's supposed to be. So I want to see where I can trim that off so that it's going to line up. So what I'm going to do is take this and line this up in the center and I can see that this strip, I don't know what happened with that look. It looks a little bit crooked, but that's not going to bother me because when I trim it, I'll kind of move that over just because I laid it crooked there. But um, see, I can straighten it up that way. So that looks good that way. This one is just a little bit longer. So maybe the cutting was off. Maybe my seam allowance wasn't as large as it needed to be. And so how I can check that is lay this ruler on here and I can see that that's, that's a correct seam allowance. And this one is just a little bit small on this side, which is why that hung over a little bit. And so that's why I love these trim it rulers and I just, I use them all the time. That one's upside down, but it doesn't really matter if it's upside down other than the non-slip is on the bottom. So I like to keep it that way. And let me see if they're still just a little smidgen. I mean, that was very minuscule. But now that should line up with this a little bit easier. Okay, so back to what I was saying. So what I'll do is I will just put that there in the corner, you know, lined up and start sewing and let the needle, you know, land in the down position so that now I can go like this and line this next seam up where it needs to be lined up. Or I can either hold it and run it through like I usually do. I'll do that for the first one. Let that go. Or I can take my double pin and when that's lined up where it needs to go there, then I'll just take those double pins and I'll just stick those in there. And because there's a pin on each side of that seam allowance and because it's thin enough that I can sew over it, you know, I always go slow anyway, but so I can sew over it so I know that they won't shift at all. And then I just pull that out. And now I've gone over that seam and then I just make sure that these meet on the ends. And if this seems a little bit longer, then I will just kind of take my fingers and push that up a little bit. And I just manipulate it so that it will, you know, meet the best that it can. And then I open it up and see that looks, that looks pretty good. That's a little teeny bit over that way, but that does not bother me at all. So... I've learned over time to pick my battles and see how particular I really, really want to be. And that is not going to bother me at all. So just doing the, doing what I showed you before without pinning. And sometimes you can kind of ease that up a little bit because I know that that's exactly where it needs to go. So I've kept my finger there. Now we'll see how we did. See, I love this simple block. It's so fun. I love just doing, I just love, <laughs> I mean, I'm a quilter, so I'm not telling you anything new, but I just, there's nothing I love more than just taking little pieces of fabric and putting them together and just getting some good sewing time in and making fun blocks out of them. I just, you know, I loved doing it. 
ever since I was a little girl and my grandma taught me how and I still have not I still have not you know changed that love because it just never gets boring for me because there's just so much that can be done in so many different designs and but I really do love taking small little pieces and uh, you know working with them I don't know I don't know why I find that fun but I just do and hopefully you're the same way I'm assuming you are since you're watching a quilting video right okay I'm gonna roll this one more time just in those seams Now, I've got this nice and flat right here, and sometimes I do this with blocks. I'll go ahead and turn it over and press from the top and get it nice and warm as well. And then put the clapper on it. And I like to stack these up, and get some weight on there. I just feel like that if it's heavier, on on my block there that is going to force this wood you know to pull the heat out faster i don't know if that's true but it's i kind of do that on the and what i call the final press this block i still will you know put that under the the five and a half inch trim it after it's done but sometimes i'll leave it like this for just a few minutes and then I know that this wood is good and hot. I mean, I can even feel it on the sides that that's pulling that up. And before it's completely cool, a lot of times I'll just go ahead and turn over my clapper so that it has an opportunity. Yeah, these are really, these are really warm now. So now that it has an opportunity to pull up that heat from the other side. Okay, so, so we're still doing the um, alternate blocks. That I showed you out of this fabric. I have all of that cutting and yardage required for you know what's needed for those and I decided to use the alternate blocks because these were such fun cute little scrappy patchwork blocks that I just felt that it needed something in between them to um, to make each individual block shine and so that's why I changed my mind on that and showed you and um, all the yardage is in there and um, so don't forget to click on the video description because I always write a nice little description with lots of links and uh, letting you know the information that you need to know. Okay, so we've got this block here. It's nice and cool. And I'm going to lay this on here and see see how it looks so what I do is I start to line up in the center and try to center everything the best that I can even if it everything doesn't line up exactly the same like you can see there's a little bit of white space here that's okay it's you know it's not noticeable enough within the block what I'm most concerned about is the outside of the block now this lines up evenly here this is just a little bit sticking out right there and so I'm gonna do that and then keeping everything in its place I'm gonna do the same thing here this is evenly up here there's a little teeny bit in the center sticking out but this I can cut off if I want to I can trim it if I need to just a little bit but I'm just making sure that nothing moved and everything is adjusted correctly before I do that that's just a little teeny bit that's this is what I was talking about right in the middle right there sometimes maybe you're at the angle you're at it's hard for you to see but that's you know that's what I trimmed off of that that will help me when I go to um, you know sew my blocks together and again in the last video I went through in detail to show you what I do if this is too small or you know too large you saw that I trimmed down but if I need to but um, when I go to sew these together, 
I know I can just lay them on top of each other. And when I sew my blocks together, I like to sew them with the pieced side up so that I know that I'm not cutting off any points and I can just kind of see what's happening. So that is number 12, hometown block. I hope you have fun making your blocks. Thank you so much for all of your kind comments. I read every one of them. Thank you so much for visiting me in my sewing room, for um, visiting my channel. And if you um, are enjoying this content and you enjoy my tutorials, please give me a like and subscribe to my channel so that you don't miss any episodes. And it really helps when you do that, uh, especially if you would like this video. It helps me to be able to bring you content and um, helps my YouTube numbers go up so that I can continue doing what I'm doing. And um, I will see you next week here in my sewing room for block number 13. And I'll chat with you later. Mm -hmm.